Hey everybody, it's Corey here at moremusicandmoreguitars.com here with another episode of Little Guy with the Big Guitar. <laughs> yeah, I love saying that. I love being that. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, oddball basses. Not necessarily oddball bass players because you're staring at one, you can recognize that. Uh, all of these are a little bit different than um, what would be considered a safe, uh, sane choice. Uh, say a precision bass, a jazz bass, a um, you know some kind of uh, active five string. Although we are going to talk about that uh, a little bit. Um, these are kind of the odd ducks of the bass world, and I have several odd ducks in my collection for a very great reason because one because they sound good uh, I like the way they look I like the way they play and there are specific opportunities where a classic a, a quote classic P bass sound with flats or a jazz bass uh, sound with round wounds with steel round wounds just doesn't quite fit the bill. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. First off, I have this really gorgeous Epiphone Thunderbird and um, classic design. You've seen these for a long, long time. They've been out uh, for a considerable amount of time. One of the first uh, neck through instruments that was produced uh, has a definitive center block in it and then wings that are glued onto it. Um, so not really a set neck, it's more of a through neck or neck through as we prefer to call it. Um, really, really wide range of sounds out of this bass and I'm always surprised every time they, they kind of fall off my radar then we'll get another one in in the shop, and, and uh, every time I play one, I think, man, that's such a cool, unique sound. Uh, you basically have two vintage uh, 760 bass humbucking pickups in this. Uh, they're great, great pickups. They're really round, full-sounding pickups. I'm going to play a little bit uh, on each pickup. You heard in the intro both the, the pickups uh, full on and uh, the tone control rolled all the way up. So let's have a listen at some of the different sounds that we can get out of this. I'll play with my fingers and then I'll play with a pick uh, on both pickups and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So here's the front pickup. As you can tell, very, very round sound. Um, ex a lot of uh, boom and bloom in the low end. Um, the top end, while it's still there, it's not quite as cutting uh, a sound as the, the back pickup, the bridge pickup in this. Same pickup, just different placement. Let me make sure that's rolled back, and I'll play a little bit on it. Let's try that with a pick. That reminds me of a great 70s uh, bass sound. Uh, you can think uh, players like Chris Squire uh, from Yes, it has that real biting uh, top end sizzle to it. Let me play a little bit with a pick on the neck pickup because I failed to do that. That's my fault. I'll do better next time. <laughs> So 
So again, still really, really round sound, um, but still quite boomy. Where would you use this? Uh, well, we can make the obvious jokes uh, about you could stash this under the seat of your car and use it as a weapon in a, a road rage incident. You know, you whip this thing out, nobody's going to want to mess with you. Uh, you could also use it as a paddle or a, a hockey stick. But uh, I would prefer to use a bass like this with the real dark tones that you can get out of uh, this bass in uh, bands with, say, one guitar player or um, uh, one, a, a trio format would be a really good place for this. Also, uh, you've seen this played by uh, lots of southern rock bands. Uh, tend to, it tends to work really well in that genre uh, of music. I've seen country performers play with this. Um, I've hosted blues jams where uh, bass players have shown up with one of these and it works extremely well. Just a really different flavor uh, that is accessible and these are priced really, really nicely, uh, so it doesn't break the bank as um, a first, second, third, fourth, or in some people's cases, eighth or ninth base. I won't name names, but it might be someone you're looking at. All right, let's swap this out. We have also from Epiphone a really cool guitar. This is the Newport, and it is a set neck guitar, so the neck is set into the body, the, the neck doesn't go all the way through, so a little bit different tones. It too has a great big pickup, humbucking pickup in the neck position and a smaller uh, humbucker in kind of a, a pseudo bridge position. It's, it's moved up a little bit uh, closer to the, the standard P bass setup. Um, so a little bit rounder tone. Let's have a listen. I'll play uh, a little bit with both pickups rolled up and the tone all the way up and let's see how it sounds. So huge sound out of a little guitar. I love short scales for that reason. As you shorten the string length, that ellipse that, that this string makes when you pluck it gets a, a little bit bigger. So it throws out a whole lot more low end. And this neck pickup is absolutely uh, punishing as far as the bass goes. Uh, you can get some really, really muddy, thick tones out of it. So let's roll it up to, to, that, to that bass pickup. Here it is on just the, the neck pickup. roll the tone control back and uh, you can imagine where to place this bass. Just huge sound out of uh, this neck pickup. Let's uh, roll this back to the I'm going to call it a bridge pickup, even though I just said it's not quite a bridge pickup, but uh, for our intents and purposes. So a little bit more clarity out of that, but still a nice round sound uh, out of it. I really love this bass. It's really easy to play. Uh, got the action set uh, a little bit lower than um, I would have it right now. I'm playing kind of hard with my right hand. That's why you're hearing a little bit of buzzing. Uh, that's easy, to, easy enough to take care of. Um, where to play this? This is a, a great blues guitar, a great classic rock guitar. Um, 
I wouldn't be uh, opposed to putting this in a hard rock or uh, even a metal band and getting some really, really uh, chunky, uh, overdriven tones out of it. Uh, a lot of output out of these pickups. Uh, it's driving the amp extremely well. Um, you could even play reggae gigs, uh, country gigs on this. Um, Latin jazz would, would be a, a great fit for this, especially if you put a, a set of flat wound strings on there. I think it would really, really accentuate that low end, give you a lot more of the fundamental that you're looking for and less of the overtones um, that you may or may not want. Um, great, great guitar, extremely comfortable. I love this uh, 30 and a half inch scale length. So again, another just great, alternative flavor to everything else that's out there. Let's move on. As if you follow, if you follow the videos that I do here, uh, you know I'm a Fender fanatic and I own lots of Fender basses. I've been playing Fender since, since I could. Uh, which was almost immediately after I uh, started playing. This is based off of the original p bass design. So um, this is a 34-inch scale, um, as is uh, the Epiphone Thunderbird and the Harper uh, that I've got. This one is a little bit different uh, from a what we now know as a precision bass in that it has the original... Uh, style single coil pickup and I love these guitars because they have the a lot of the characters and uh, character and qualities of a precision bass with just a little bit more whack to them the the single coil um, does a whole lot for the sound of this so this is a bolt-on neck and uh, typically it's an ash body on on most of these uh, I believe that this is uh, a different material. Um, maple neck, maple fingerboard. This one does have a very large neck, so if you're scared of large necks, um, you know, may not be the base for you. I'm not, but because I'm a little guy with a big guitar, and uh, I'm into that kind of thing, so let me... This is volume all the way up, tone control all the way up, and here we go. So as you can tell, completely different sound than the two Epiphones. Uh, really, really, uh, it's not dark, but it is uh, very warm. Um, it's bright without being too snappy. Um, I have always been a fan of Precisions, and the reason being, I can get a lot of different tones out of one guitar just by using the tone control. Uh, rolling it back or all the way up and changing my hand position. So um, I'll show you one trick I like to use, which is uh, pull my sleeve up a little bit so I can get the, the palm muting going on. Roll the tone control back and play with your thumb and you can hear. almost get upright like tones out of this thing just using that one technique a, a good friend of mine does this and can make his sound like a tuba I still haven't cracked that code yet but uh, you're welcome to give it a shot it's a, a really really amazing thing to to hear uh, I have a, a similar bass uh, except it's a short scale uh, and I've got a, a 51 52 style uh, single coil in it uh, I put flat wounds on it. It has a real woody whack to it that uh, I enjoy. Uh, these kind of guitars, uh, they slot in extremely well with two guitar bands. Uh, 
Um, if you're playing like me, playing a lot of classic rock, playing a lot of blues, playing a lot of country, um, it just seems to slot in sonically. You've got so, so few frequencies um, to take care of in a two, two guitar band because the guitars and the drums are taking up a lot of the sonic space. Uh, it's nice to have a guitar like this that's going to slide into a specific set of frequencies so that you can be heard uh, and all your hard work um, learning how to play can be shown off to people, which is part of why we do this. Um, great guitar. Um, this particular guitar, uh, these style guitars don't have a whole lot of neck dive. Uh, the Thunderbird with the big headstock, sometimes that can be an issue. Uh, a lot of players uh, move move strap buttons around on it. Um, I find with these, you don't have to do that. Just a great, great guitar. Uh, would I make this, this guitar my main guitar? Possibly, um, if that's the exact sound I'm going for. But this is probably like bass number two or three um, that you bring into the studio and plug up and the engineer goes, oh, that's it, that's the sound. So, now, we have to talk about active five strings. This is a gorgeous uh, Harper Gravity 5 made by Jacob Harper at Harper Guitars. Uh, I got to work with him in specking this out. Um, I wanted a single cut and he had this design uh, already made up and uh, I just love the way it turned out. Uh, it's got some really nice exotic woods. We went with Seymour Duncan Quarter Pounders uh, and a, uh, an active preamp that is really outstanding. Let's have a listen. <laughs> If you want a, a guitar that is that like checks almost every box as far as uh, what you can play on it, uh, you should really look into getting an active five string uh, with bass and treble controls and a mid-range control. This one happens to have a mid-range boost, uh, which is a really really cool feature. Uh, especially if you're like me and you like to play with some overdrive, you can kick that on. It really makes an overdrive snarl uh, and get a little bit angrier. Um, this thing pretty well does it all. Let me, uh, let me roll it back to this back pickup here, and I'm going to accentuate the top end just a little bit and uh, listen to the tones. <laughs> So that bright, burpy, jazz fusion tone that you've uh, uh, grown to love is right inside of this guitar, just with this pickup. I just added a, a touch. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot with this active system. Um, I think we've got on this 10 dB of uh, boost or cut on it. Let's, uh, let's take it to the other extreme. Let's see how deep and dark we can get this thing to sound. So I'm going to roll the treble all the way off. I'm going to roll the mid-range back just a little bit, and I'm going to boost the, the bass. And uh, I've got it up on the uh, quarter pounder P-bass pickup. with the, the palm muting technique. The, 
would make a great reggae guitar. Really, you can do anything with one of these. Now, uh, this is most definitely, most certainly a boutique instrument. Um, it's handmade here in the States, uh, made by one guy in one shop. So, uh, you know, the price can be um, uh, prohibitive for some people. Uh, but I recommend saving up your pennies and getting a really nice active five string. Um, if you are willing to dive into the, the world of five strings, I love five strings because you have, you basically have two octaves and four frets. Um, so, yeah, a lot of flexibility with this, uh, with something like this. Um, if you put a set of flat wounds on it, you could definitely do the, the classic Motown bass style um, or the uh, Carol Kay style uh, uh, sound out of it with uh, a little bit of palm muting and a pick uh, on a set of flat wounds and you can get that great, great sound that she always had. Uh, or you could play modern music, you know, really, this is a jack of all trades and it pretty well masters them all if, um, if you allow it, you put the right strings on it uh, and apply the proper techniques. So, you know, basically what I came here to, to tell you was don't be scared of different. Uh, I know a lot of us we buy one bass, we fall in love with one bass, and we play that bass for the rest of our career. I was one of those guys who had the same guitar for 15 years um, until uh, a friend of mine told me it's like trying to paint with just one color. Uh, while you can do it, and artists do it all the time, there's all kinds of black and white, um, amazing uh, pieces of artwork. It's great to have those different colors uh, for different situations, and I'm a firm believer in it. If you have any questions about any of these bases, uh, or bases, or you just want to talk bass in general, give me a call at more, moreguitars.com or at More Music in Evansville, Indiana. Thank you all very much.